What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the War Report here on Cloudwing Valley. This was Battle Number 5, Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. I am your host, Fakulata of the Gashkia Tribe, and this has been an exciting week. The constant tug of war over in the Liang Yun region has heated up. It is quite intense over there. There is some pretty salty fighting going on. I think salty would be the right word to put there. Um, so, Let's go ahead and look at some of these key terms real quick. You guys that have been here a long time know these. If you don't, if you have not been here before, this is what the words mean. The words mean these things. So go ahead, give it a look. We're going to jump right in. First up, we're going to take a look at some current events. Got some confirmations. There are two battles left in this here phase. So phase two, where we only get purple units, two more wars. You have this Saturday, December 17th, and then the following Tuesday, December 20th. Those are the last two battles. You will see some house rank six folks popping up right now. Um, after December 20th, we are going to have the 24th being free battles, and then the two territory wars following will be drill mode. Now, if you don't know what drill mode is, you can go farm silver, have a great time. You can get money if you defend the land that you own. You can get money if you assault other people's land. So it's kind of like a free territory war. You don't lose anything if you if you die. So go out there, have some fun, guys. And then we will see you guys on the flip side of the new year. So the first war report of the new year will be happening right there with battle number eight. So uh, look forward to seeing you all then. All right, there were no alliance changes, but we're going to jump over into the politics. Check out our top 10, essentially. So family is still on top with 36,195 in the seasonal acclaim category. I3 Kingdom with 27,000. Revenant, 24,250. Yellow Turbans, 21,045. Hibernia, 18,200. Righteous Order, 4,500. Tianming, 3,850. And Trinity with 3,000. Next up, we're going to cruise over to the war, check out the northern borderlands. Here's where we began. Here's where we ended. Taking a look at the changes of the northern borderland, Nemesis gained 5, Imperium of Atlas gained 1. Jumping on down to the south end. Here's where we began. And here's where we ended. A lot changed down there. Taking a look at that. We have Leviathan gaining 4, Imperium of Atlas gaining 4, Partisans gaining 1, Nemesis gaining 1, and I Kingdom gaining 1. Taking a look at the Houses of the Borderlands, we have Nemesis on top with 23% of the world, 55,550. Tried to read that one, went backwards. How weird. Gosh, get dub with 19%, 4,500. Borderlands Legion with 3,150. I Kingdom 2,850, Partisans 1,350, Solar Mortar 1,200, Sephira 1,050, Dawn Hammer 1,050, Odin 950, Leviathan 900, Premium of Atlas 900, and Goshkia with 500. Taking a look at the Anadolu region down there in the southwest, this is where we began, and that's where we ended. See all those changes? Yeah, there's just a couple. So Partisans gained two, Warborn gained four, Vigilantes gained three. Looking at the houses of Anadolu, we see the Anadolu Legion still has 57% of the world, mostly gated behind the levels of houses. Warborn with 4,950 prestige, Vigilantes 2,100. Partisans 1,350, Muramasa 750, Blackwing Guard 650, and Dreamhouse with 150. Taking a look at the race for Regionopolis, we have Revenant all primed and ready to siege that capital. So we're probably going to see Revenant versus Cohorts come the first battle. We might see someone slip on over here and uh, try to steal it from them. We'll see. Who knows? It usually happens, but we will see. All right, so primary region, Liang Yun. This has been the hottest region since it opened. YT and family going at it. They have been at each other's throats for weeks it's been crazy fighting over there you all seen it spill over in the world chat y'all know what i'm talking about all right so this is where it began and that's where it ended taking a look at the battles reaper gained one macedon gained six looking at the houses of liang yun the liang yun legion has 34 percent of the prestige with 6955 macedon with 3900 
Vaga or Vanguard with 3,900, Reaper with 1,950, Radiance with 1,755, Midway Kings with 1,560, and Relentless with 585. Taking a look at the showdown for the capital, Dai Cheng, we have the Legion ready to fight either one of these contenders. So Family started with the big lead, and now Yellow Turbans has pulled ahead with 7,605. Family has 6,045. Neither one of these contenders are out of the race yet. They are going to duke this out until that door opens, and we're going to see how this all plays out. It is getting really exciting, guys. There's some good fighting going on out there. So we're going to see where this all goes. But for right now, we have the movers and shakers. Top gains of the night, Macedon with six new thieves. Nemesis with six. Imperium of Atlas with five. Warborn with three. Leviathan with two. Vigilantes with two. Partisans with one. And Reaper with one. Over on the biggest losses side, Vanguard lost eight. Relentless lost five. Midway Kings lost two. Solomord lost one. And Speak lost one. Take a look at the Alliance Movers and Shakers. Top gains of the night go to Trinity, gaining 7, Yellow Turbans, gaining 7, I3 Kingdoms, gaining 6, and Brevnant, gaining 5. Biggest losses of the night go to Family, who lost 15 Thiefs. Righteous Order, minus 1, and No Evil, minus 1. Now for the fun stuff. Who wants to win a raffle? Everyone wants to win a raffle. Go ahead, type in CV now for 20,000 silver. Let's see who wins this one. Going to have a lot of contenders here. Yep, there they go. All right, so we have a little more than 11, I think. Pretty sure. Yep, 35. 35 of y'all. Go ahead, type it in. You guys know how to spell CV. I trust you. All right, I think that's pretty good. There we go. All right, we're rolling. Sleepy has spoken. Congratulations to Crow Knight TTV of Dawnhammer, right? Yep, congratulations. Uh, you are the winner of the 20,000 silver. Hopefully this is just a drop in the bucket towards the earnings that you're going to have in this game. So uh, I'll shoot you over the code after the stream. So next up, we're going to take a look at the rankings. Let's go ahead and jump on over here. The Thief Race is on. There are 11 Thiefs on the table for the first to reach the uh, house level 6. And the House Level 5 contenders right now are Partisans, Vigilantes, I Kingdom, Goshki Dub, Radiance, Macedon, Speak, Midway Kings, Nemesis, Relentless, and Vanguard. In the House Level 4 category, we have Leviathan, Sephira, Imperium of Atlas, Goshkia, Here, Odin, Reaper, and Warborn. In the House Level 3 category, we have Muramasa, Dawnhammer, and Blackwing Guard. Next up, we're going to take a look at the top 10 houses. Nemesis, number one of I3 Kingdoms. 5,550 prestige, level 5, purely cases of liege. Population is 92, seasonal claim of 12,450, renown of 0, property value of 260 triumphs. Second place, Warborn of Revenant. 4,950 prestige, level 4, Zilong Yungcheng is a liege. Population is 89, seasonal claim of 15,300. Renown of negative 200, property value of 240 triumphs. Next up in third place, we have Goshki Dub of Hibernia. 4,500 prestige, level is 5, Faglados is a liege. Population is 84, seasonal claim of 13,950. Renown of 900. Property value of 230 triumphs. Next up in fourth place, we have Macedon of Yellow Turbans. 3,900 prestige. Level is 5. Dresden is liege. Population 96. Seasonal claim of 8,790. Renown of 585. Property value of 130 triumphs. All right, bring up fifth place, we have a Vanguard of Family. 3,900 prestige, level is 5, Tong Tong is leash, population is 100, seasonal claim of 8,885, renown of 390, and property value of 130 triumphs. Next up in sixth place, we have I Kingdom of I3 Kingdoms. Prestige of 2,850. Level is 5, I Secret is Liege, population is 95, Seasonal Claim of 10,050, 
Renown of 900, property value of 140 triumphs. Next up in 7th place, we have the Partisans, 2,700 prestige. The level is 5, Agarlia is the leash, population is 67. Seasonal claim of 6,525. Renown of 0, property value of 140 triumphs. Next up in 8th place, we have Vigilantes of Revenant, 2,100 prestige. Level is 5. Lugotrix is the leash. Population is 91. Seasonal claim is 6,750. Renown of negative 300. Property value of 95 triumphs. Next up in ninth place, we have Reaper of the Yellow Turbans. 1,950 prestige. Level is 4. Instant kills is the leash. Population is 55. Seasonal claim of 5,835. Renown of 390. Property value of 75 triumphs. And bringing up 10th place, we have Radiance of the Yellow Turbans, 1,755 prestige. Level is 5, Hawkeye is a liege. Population is 96. Seasonal claim is 6,420, renown of 540, and property value of 70. Bringing up the rest of the standings, we have 11th place going to Midway Kings, 12th to Solemn Order, 13th is Sephira, 14th Dawnhammer, 15th Odin, Leviathan in 16th, 17th Imperium of Atlas, 18 Muramasa, 19 Blackwing Guard, and 20th Relentless. Bringing up the Alliance board, we have I3 Kingdoms in first place with 9,450 prestige. Seasonal claim of 27,600, renown of 900, property value of 445 triumphs, population is 271. I Kingdoms the lead with Nemesis and Sephira at their side. Next up in second place, we have Revenant with 7,700 prestige. Seasonal claim of 24,250. Renown of negative 450. Property value of 360 triumphs. Population is 230. Vigilantes is the lead with Warborn and Blackwing Guard at their side. Next up in third place, we have Yellow Turbans with 7,605 prestige. Seasonal claim of 21,045, renown of 1,515, property value of 275 triumphs, population is 247. Macedon is the lead with Reaper and Radiance at their side. Next up in fourth place, we have Family with 6,045 prestige, seasonal claim of 25,635, renown of 585, property value of 200 triumphs, population is 253. Midway Kings is the lead with Vanguard and Relentless at their side. Next up in fifth place, we have Hibernia with 5,950 prestige, seasonal claim of 18,200, renown of 1,150, property value of 295, population is 269. Goshki is the lead with Goshki Dub and Odin at their side. Next up in sixth place, we have Righteous Order with 2,250 prestige. Seasonal claim is 7,600, renown of 100, property value of 95 triumphs, population is 114. Dawnhammer is the lead with Solemn Order at their side. Next up in 7th place we have Trinity with 1,800 prestige, seasonal claim of 3,900, Renown of zero, property value of 80 triumphs, population is 171. Leviathan is the lead with Imperium of Atlas at their side. Next up in eighth place, we have Tian Ming with 750 prestige. Seasonal claim of 3,850, renown of negative 50. Property value of 35 triumphs, population is 39. Murmasa is the only one in this alliance. And I believe we have a few free agents tonight. We have Partisans with 2,700.
prestige worth the land, and Dreamhouse, the new little house that could, with 150 prestige, still on the board. Sliding on over to the Legends board, we have Radiance in first place, Mason in second place, Midway Kings in third, Goshki in fourth, Warborn in fifth, Hurt in sixth, Nemesis in seventh, Vigilantes in eighth, Alice in ninth, and Odin in tenth. Next up, we're going to cruise on over to the regional growth. Take a look at the top thief builders. We have first place going to Goshka Dub with 900. Tied for first is I Kingdom with 900. Mason in third with 585. Radiance fourth with 540. Vanguard fifth, 390. Reaper in sixth, 390. Odin in 7th with 200, Midway Kings in 8th with 195, Speak in 9th with 150, and Solemn Order with 100. Next up, we're going to take a look at the most prestigious fiefs. As you can see, the number of level 4s is growing, the number of level 5s is shrinking, and there is still only one level 6 fief in the world. That is where you can find a 40% bonus reward. It is over at Shojin. Everybody has low taxes there, so feel free to craft to your heart's content. Over at the, the level 5 category, we have 20% bonus rewards at Chrysanthias, Esternopolis, Bolin, Bridia, Marsakota, and Whalewin. Then in the house level 4 category, you can get a 10% bonus for turning in thief quests at any of those properties. Quite a few of them. So many, they're falling off the map there. All right, so we are going to slide on over to the Borderlands real quick. We have a 95% free house versus 5% legion owned property here. 9,100 above flatlined. So that's doing pretty well. It's at stable. It's pretty good for the Borderlands. Average fort level is 3. Average town level is 3. Average village level is 1. Current top renowned builders is the I Kingdom with 900 and Goshka Dub with 900. Odin follows with 200. Solemn Order with 150. Radiance with 150. Top fortified stronghold in the region is Shojin, which, funny enough, means hand towel, if you didn't know. Um, Whalewin and Bridia are both level 5 apiece. We do have two level 2 villages at Sansiong and Galenvox. So uh, there you go. That is the Borderland in a nutshell. Taking a look at the Fief quests. Spent all Sunday night lugging all these quests. So I hope you like them. So Shojin has six Janets. You know those horses you throw away? Toss them over at Shojin. You get 300 or 3,500 player EXP every time you turn it in. You can also turn it in Hematite there for the same. Um, taking a look at the top honor, you have Zdeni uh, with 720 honor per turn in for the epic artillery quest. That is your sweet spot. Over there on top house EXP gains, you can also drop those over at Shojin for 280 house EXP. That's pretty close to the border too, so if you're over in Liang Yun and you need some house EXP, you just jump on over that border, turn it in. You can also hit up some of those trading posts to go find some regional exotics if you don't have any. Alright, so there are still no places to siege craft in the borderlands, but you can craft some units. So here you go, over at Shoujin, you got Pavis Crossbowman Kits, Shenji Grenadiers, Imperial Pike Guards, Yeomen, and the Mermamillos. Uh, all can be crafted over in the Borderlands at Shoujin. Bredia can do Prefecture Heavy Cav, Huskarls, and Axe Raider Kits. Whalewind can do Imperial Spear Guard Kits, Kev Tool Kit, Calvary Kits, Banner Guard Kits, and Huskarl Kits. In all honesty, the only kit out of all of these you should care about are those Pavise Crossbowmen Kits, which are the cheapest and easiest to craft in all the kits. So if you need gold kits for those quests to build up your fiefs, that's where you want to craft them. Alright, so let's slide on over to Anadolu, where the beaches are warm and the water is cool. There we go. 63% is free house owned, 37% is legion owned, 8,800 prosperity growth. So it's, try, it's catching up to uh, the borderlands there. So people are building stuff out here. So average fort level is four, average town level is four, average village level is one. Blackwing Guard is still the only one in a positive renown with 50. Top fortified stronghold right now is Marsakota, Chrysanthias, Bolin, and Astronopolis, all rank five apiece. Top growing villages, we have Manrobel, Muradiba, Nova Justinia, Itz, and Copes Thoris, um, all at rank 2. Taking a look over at the Fief quests, we have top player EXP gains with Marsakota. 10 rare Rebel Cavalry kits will get you 3,600 player XP. And Agokli has 1 epic artillery 
for the 660, as does Residina. If you're looking for house EXP gains and don't want to trek on up to the Borderlands, go to Astronopolis or Marsakota or Bolin. All of those on each one of those little continents has a regional exotic quest for 240. So that's where you can get that. Now, unfortunately, there is no siege crafting and no unit crafting anywhere in Anadolu. So you're going to have to travel to the Borderlands if you want those. Next up, we are going to slide on over to Liang Yun. 78% free houses, 22% legions, 5,590 prosperity growth, average fort level is 4, average town level is 3, average village level is 1. Current renowned builders leader is Macedon with 585. I never thought I'd see the day that Macedon would be leading in the top renowned builders. That is quite impressive, guys. You guys are really turning that corner, making Uncle Fog proud. Vanguard is on the board with 390 renown, also building, which is nice. It's going to be a race. I mean, honestly, they need this renown to be able to be the first in the door. So it's going to be a race. So who gets there first? Radiance, 390. Reaper, 390. Midway Kings, 195. Top Fortified Strongholds, Gao King with 4. Ming Yu with 4. Lu with 4. Hebo with 4. And Zanli with 4. A whole lot of 4s. Not much 5s. Top growing villages, you have Luxing and Mari, both ranked two. All right, so the fifth quest in the region. There you are, player EXP. You can get 3,000 player EXP by turning in those rare rubble cavalry kits or the barbs. Uh, Healy or Gao King uh, will be your destination of choice for those two. Now, top honor gains, there are some unique ones here. You have the Luge with 660, or you have the legendary kits at Hebo with uh, two of those for 500. Top house EXP gains. It's better to just jump over the border, hit Shoujin, which is just on the other side of the wall there. Uh, Ming Yu is your next best option with 220. Zandlin, also 220. And then again, there is no siege or unit kit crafting here. Sorry, guys. The only place you can do it is the Borderlands. Uh, so. That is about all of our war report today. Thank you so much for tuning in. GSCH.info slash war report to check out the full write-ups and everything and all the back episodes, anything that you need. Get it there. Feel free to hit me up in game. I'm Foglada. You guys know me. I'm vocal. Feel free to add me to your friends list. Reach out to me if you got questions. Happy to help any one of you. I don't care if you're you're like my number one enemy. You're welcome to ask me questions. I will help you. I don't care. You're my friend too. I love all y'all and I'll see you soon. Have a good one, guys.